Hey, my name's Janine. I'm a professional Highland Games athlete. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, you're gonna see three videos stitched together um, where I talk about uh, some problems with transphobia that I've encountered as an athlete and my response to statements like, men are stronger than women. Enjoy. TikTok doesn't allow for a lot of nuance in some of these conversations. Here's why I try to address some of these misconceptions. So while this may be true, the problem is that most people extrapolate it to also mean this. This is not true. And when someone believes this, a natural consequential belief is this. And when someone believes that, a problematic outcome is that they're likely to believe this. And as a result, women like me, who violate stereotypical gender norms, get targeted for sexist, transphobic, misogynistic comments. I posted that stitch on my Facebook page. And one of my followers commented that right after my video came up, the next video on their feed was a story about how in Utah, the High School Athletic Association had a school investigate a girl all the way back to kindergarten. Because in state level competition, she was so dominant that the second and third place finishers accused her of being trans. Yeah. You can see this story is just from last week and they looked into the girls enrollment records all the way back to kindergarten. So part of the problem, as I see it, when we're talking about bans on trans girls in high school sports is that people think that they're a lot better at identifying trans individuals than they actually are. If you've been following me for any length of time, there are a couple things that you know about me. One is that I'm a professional level Highland Games athlete, which means that I'm a high level athlete, a strength sport athlete, and so I have probably more visible muscle tone than the average woman. Second, if you're one of the uh, OGs or if you've seen a lot of my videos, you know that I have a son. I have, uh, I've actually given birth. I have been pregnant and given birth to a child. And the third thing is that you would have seen me post videos and pictures with a lot of different looks from no makeup, like right now I have no makeup on, to like a more glam look, wearing uh, more like mask appearing, um, athletic attire, um, to like very like overtly feminine, sexy attire. So like, for example, this is the same person as this. And like one reason that I post myself in a variety of different looks is because I want to empower women to break free of feeling like they have to present themselves in a certain way. And also to highlight the degree to which gender is a social construct. To a certain extent, we're all performing gender. But far too many people think that they can look at certain outward appearances and assume that they are able then to tell what someone's biological sex is, consequently. I want to be clear that if someone sees a picture or a video of me looking like this, and they misgender me in the comments and refer to me as a man, I don't think those are stupid people or bad people. I do think you're a bad person if you act on that snap judgment and intentionally harm me, especially if you ignore context clues, do no research, and persist when I correct you. For example, sliding into my DMs like this person did, Especially when, like this person, you're like clueless about what female strength sport athletes look like. Or like this person who like literally took a screenshot of the video and compared it with a photo that I posted of me looking like more femme and said that the chins aren't the same. Like what? Now the reality is that we all rely on stereotypes and our past experiences to create a framework for us to be able to operate in the world. And that's why, like I said in part one, if someone sees like just a snapshot of me, and do, especially doing something athletic, wearing athletic attire, um, if I don't have makeup on or whatever, if they don't get a good look at me, they don't interact with me, they don't hear my voice, whatever, like I'm not gonna think that they're stupid or bad people if they think that, that, that I'm a man. Especially because I compete in a sport where we're required to wear a garment that is has just traditionally been worn by men um, and it's a straight sport. Like, I'm not gonna fault people for that. My problem is with the behaviors people engage in after that snap judgment. It's why we need to recognize what things are stereotypes and are not based in fact. Recognize that there are exceptions to certain rules. That we can do a better job of recognizing those stereotypes and taking that space between the stereotype and consequential behavior and making it bigger so that we have the opportunity to change our behavior. And I wrestled with how I was going to respond to accusations of me being a, a trans woman on social media because I didn't want to come across as being like, no, but I'm, but I'm a, a real woman. I didn't want my responses to come across that way at all because being that I'm like irrefutably female, ugh, 
because I've been pregnant and pushed a child through my cervix. My very existence is the exception to some of these rules that we have. Like I'm six feet tall, about 215 pounds, buzzed hair, you know, like I can do pull up. Like, those muscles don't show up very much right now, I guess, I guess, whatever. And like just with any kind of bias like this and stereotypes, the people who assume of themselves that they're the least biased, and in this case, I would say that would be the people who think like, oh no, but I really can tell, like I'm not, I'm not wrong about identifying someone as a trans woman. I'd say because they're assuming that they can tell, that gap is non-existent between them ha making a snap judgment and any possible behaviors that are triggered as a response. If you didn't watch my first part, you may be wondering what's the harm in this? And like, here's an example you can pause to read. In that Utah case, the parents and the student were not never informed and never came to that, apparently to protect her. But here in Ohio, the house passed a bill banning trans girls from girls sports, where the investigation would include genital exams and testing DNA and testosterone levels. Even if they remove the provision for genital testing, as the president of the Ohio Senate says that they will, the other testing requirements that remain mean that any girl that's accused would know that she's being investigated. And while at 40 years old, I can handle getting those kind of comments. How many 14, 15, 16, 17 year old girls do you know that could?